Hello, patrons, and welcome back to Night Parade Happy Hour, the show where we drink and talk about anime. I'm Fat Man. I'm Kruga. <laughs> and tonight, we're talking about Iron Blood Orphans Season 2. Yeah. <laughs> yep. This certainly was eventful. I think Season 2 is better than Season 1, personally. Absolutely. I mean, Season 1 is good, but this took everything from Season 1 and dialed it up to 11. We got two new versions of Barbatos, some more Gundams. We got, we got two new Gundams, a mobile armor, and a pregnant teenage girl. <laughs> oh yeah, that, uh, that happened. <laughs> that weird side plot. <laughs> since I uh, since I kind of took over everything last episode, I'm gonna let you start. All right. Well, yeah, I'm winging this, so this could go right. anyway. Yeah. Season two of Mobile Suit Gundam: Iron Blooded Orphans picks up two years after we leave off in season one. Uh, Tekken is more established. They're rising in the ranks of Tewas. Yep. And they've been put in charge of a mining facility on Mars. <laughs> digging up half metals. Cordelia has started her own company. <laughs> the Admos Company. Yep. I know they have a school and look after orphans, but I can't really remember what else they did. I think that was it. Oh. I think the the... I think it was just trying to find orphans' homes or take care of them or something like that. I think that was their main purpose. It's been a few weeks since we watched this. Yes, yes. A lot of circumstances got in the way of us recording. Yeah. My bad. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> Put these out whenever we can. But... <laughs> I'm 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 honestly trying to remember what happened at the beginning of the season. Uh we got some new faces around Tekadin cuz mm -hmm. they're growing in notoriety. Yep. As a growing business, they need to hire more work and people flock to them because they're becoming more well known. They've changed the world since that incident in what was that city? Um Edmonton. Oh yes. Although unintentional, they showed the world the power of mobile suits and of human debris. Yep. Child soldiers are being trained in military factions again, and yep. mobile suits are going back into production. So, might not be a change for the best. Yeah, you know, one of the vibes that I got this season was, on one hand, you have orphans who look up to Tekadin and are flocking to them to join them. And then on the other hand, you have the rest of society who is absolutely terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, how are you going to stop somebody in a Gundam? <laughs> yeah. Especially Mikazuki, that crazy little bastard. Fucker's scary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I'm getting excited. I, I think in any other universe, he'd be a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> so. Without Orga there, he'd have gone off the deep end a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've got a few new characters this time around. Yep. Uh, we got Hush. Uh, Who is probably the most prominent new character. I think he had the most lines, but I'm not sure. Yeah. He, uh, yeah. He's a new Tekken recruit. That, uh, oh, he was trying to compete with Mikazuki right off the bat, because... <laughs> They hadn't been in combat for a while, and Mikazuki's yeah. just been lazing about. And he wanted to get the Alea Vinyana system installed into his body, which everyone told him was a very bad idea. Yeah, because we learned just how bad that can fuck you up this season. 
Oh, yeah. If it goes wrong, you are paralyzed for life. Or yep. or dead. So, yep. don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't. Just don't. After being shown what a badass Mikazuki was, he kind of became his lapdog. Yep. His personal assistant. Yep. Which I thought was cool. I liked the chemistry between the two characters. Yeah. After so. the uh, after the fight in Edmonton against uh, the out of control Ayn. Oh yeah. Uh, Mikazuki lost the function of his right arm. Yes, he did. It only function. It only hit, He can only use his right arm now when he's plugged into the Alea Vinyana system in the Barbados. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just completely paralyzed. So. Oh, I wonder how that works. Yeah, they don't really go into much detail about that, do they? Because if the uh, the nerves were disconnected, then... It then wouldn't... it shouldn't work at all. Mm-mm. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's the thing I noticed about Gundam. They introduce all of these things into their universe, but then they never fully explain them. No. No. But, I mean, uh, well, you do get a lot more detail in, like, the Universal Century, but, you know, Iron-Blooded Orphans had two seasons. The Universal Century has, like, you know, 30 animes in it, so... Iron-Blooded Orphans, Iron -Blooded Orphans has a spinoff coming... Oh, does it? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Side that story. Oh. Oh, a side story. Yeah. Gundam is renowned for their side stories. Yep. <laughs> yep. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot. <laughs> I completely forgot oh. to write down this character. <laughs> 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 oh, where is he? Uh, Give me a second. Yeah, Zack. I forgot about Zack. Zack? Yeah. Which one was Zack? He is the uh, lazy mechanic. The lazy mechanic. He's got the pompadour. The... Oh, right. The pompadour guy. Yeah, okay. I completely forgot his name and just called him pompadour guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zack, yeah. He wasn't too prevalent, but... He was... He, he was a voice of reason. He became more prevalent by the end of the season. Trying to understand why all of these kids are willing to kill themselves for... You know, when they know it's a losing battle. Yeah. But... Zack uh, wasn't... I don't think Zack was an orphan. I don't think so, no. He went to school, he's an engineer. Yep. There was a, there was a line um, later in the season where he was thinking about leaving Tekadin and his friend to go with him, and he said that, I think he said his father could find them jobs. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think he's an orphan now. <laughs> no. I liked him. He's yeah, an interesting he fella. Yeah. When everyone else was blindly following orders, he was thinking of his own... Yeah, and they actually liked that about him. <laughs> yeah. So, even though he didn't understand what was going on, and there was conflict and tension between him and everybody else, they still got along. So. Yeah. And Orga understood exactly where he was coming from. And then there's Dean. Dean. An absolute square of a human. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, that's Pateen. all I needed to say. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he is very, like, laid-back, soft-spoken, and he's just huge. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it, it is almost like they just went in and drew a square and put a head on it. <laughs> he, uh, we didn't find out too much about him. He's no. big well. and silent. All we know is that he was a murderer before he came to Tekadin. Yep. And they were like the only ones that accepted him. Yep. 
well, he didn't kill people intentionally. Oh? I don't, I don't think. I think when he was telling his story, he was saying that it was an accident, but he still felt like it was his fault and everybody blamed him for it anyway. I remember I, I, literally nothing from that conversation. Okay, I thought that's what he said, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Who knows? But I, I, I don't think he's like a serial killer or anything like that. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Mikazuki, on the other hand, kidding. <laughs> fair. <laughs> Very fair. That guy, I think over seasons one and two, he killed more people than smallpox. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. One's perfect. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> but I mean, you know, can you blame the guy? He has somebody, you know reinforcing these ideals in his head and basically encouraging him to go out there and fight and he's enabling him. Orga is enabling Mikazuki. <laughs> yep. Everything for Orga. Everything yeah. to get to where we belong. Yep. So this season starts off with some what was he, a writer or something? Uh, uh, some sort of jackass was is trying to boost his uh, fame off of Fidelia. I don't remember this. Oh, and when she uh, basically tells him to fuck off, he hires a band of mercenaries to go after Tekadin. Yeah, I don't remember this at all. Wow. Um. Should we have reviewed a bit before we started this? Maybe. Um yeah, I don't I don't remember that at all. Yeah, that they, they were doing a uh Tekadin was doing a they were working at the half metal mine. Right. As uh as bodyguards. Mm hmm While Kudelia was giving tours of the facility. And Oh okay, okay, I vaguely remember this now. Alright. Yeah, okay. It was, Yuck. uh... Hmm. Shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh... Yeah, it was the Don Horizon Corpse. Oh, right! Okay, yeah, I remember now. I remember that now. Okay, for some reason, I was thinking that was season one. Ah, so yeah. they're starting to blend together. Yeah, okay, yeah, the Dawn Horizon Corpse, yeah, okay, I remember. The guy with the target on his head. Yep, 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 yep. Like, shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> that is a dumb tattoo. <laughs> yeah, what is with that? Aye. But, yeah. So they go into space, uh, blow him the hell up. Yep. That's the end of them. <laughs> <laughs> what happened after that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should start watching these more than once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, After they fight the Dawn Horizon Corpse. Isn't that when they find the mobile armor? I don't think so. Because that happened relatively early in the season. It did. Oh. I know what happened next. Okay. Some traitorous bastard at the uh, Earth branch started causing commotion in the uh, in the ranks. Oh, right. He was, uh, yeah. That's right. He was, uh, oh my god, what was his job again? Was he, didn't he have something to do with Tekadin's finances? Yeah. Yeah, and he starts. Or, no, he was the uh, communications guy. Oh right, the commun yeah, the and he started he started communicating with Gallerhorn and yeah, the the bearded guy. There was somebody within Tewas or Te Tewas Tekadin who was communicating with that bearded guy. Yeah, and uh, Gallen, Gallen, right? And 
was he a mercenary or did he work for Galar? Um, he was a mercenary that was hired by Rustal Alien. Right. So he didn't work for Tewas or anything. No. So, yeah, basically, Rustal Alien was trying to take down Tekadin from within. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. The uh, the bearded guy. Yeah. Uh, well, I just looked him up, and he, uh, his English voice actor has played some characters you might recognize. Oh, really? Yes. He's been involved in a few other Gundams. Which ones? Uh, he was in 0083, Stardust Memory, as, as? Dick, Dick Allen. Oh, that name doesn't ring a bell, but I'm pretty sure it'll come back to me. <laughs> uh, Mobile Suit Gundam F91 as Lieutenant Bardo. Mm, okay, I remember him. Yep. And Athamas Team mm. as uh, Genus? Or uh, how do you pronounce this name? I have no idea. I will pull up a picture of him for you. Okay. There you go. Oh, he's the main villain of 8th MS team. Ah. He's the uh the main pilot of the 8th MS team starts having romantic relations with his sister. <laughs> so, that Zaku that he destroys at the beginning of the season with the ball? Yeah. She was piloting that Zaku. It comes full circle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How do you pronounce so, the name? Oh god, I do not remember. I'd have to watch it again. Alright. But but I, I definitely recognize him, so. Alright. What about that uh uh 0083 character? Alright. What, what does he look like? This. Oh him. Oh, that makes me sad. <laughs> Oh, uh, no spoilers. Yeah, no, I'm not going to spoil anything. He is, uh, he is, uh, part of the same team that Ko Uraki, the main, the, the, well, the guy who becomes one of the main Gundam pilots. Yeah. The main character, essentially. He, he's on his team. Okay. So, he's, I think he's one of the GM pilots, but I'm not sure. And then <laughs> Lieutenant Bardo. Oh, yeah, yeah, him. Yep. Hmm. So. Well, that's our one voice actor character for this episode. <laughs> oh, uh, they are voiced by... Oh, shit. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> their, their English voice actor is... Lex Lang? Yeah. Alexis yeah, Lex Lang. Lang. Yeah. Uh, oh. What other characters has he voiced? That's a very good question. Uh, Goku in Dragon Ball Super. Okay. Interesting. Uh, we got... Uh, shit. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really recognizing much of anything else. Oh, he was in JoJo. Yeah. As someone I don't know, because I haven't seen the fourth JoJo's yet. <laughs> yep. Goemon. He's Goemon from Loop on the Third. From a, oh, okay. a few of the few of the series it looks like. Or those are movies. No, oh, it was in Loop on the Third 2015. He's the main antagonist in Megalobox, Yuri. Oh, okay. I I have to show that to you sometime. Alright. Alright, Megalobox is the one with the uh boxers with the the in mechanical arms. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I know oh, what you're talking about. I love that one so much. But, anyways. This has been another Fat Man and Gruga trailing off moment. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've completely forgotten what I was talking about. Complete with a little Gundam history from Kruga himself. You're welcome, world. <laughs> Uh, not that you were asking for it. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, Radik, uh, excuse me. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> God. 
cutting that out. <laughs> uh. Sorry, rum makes me fart. <laughs> oh my god, people are gonna hate us. Ah. <laughs> uh. So, Radik, the communications guy on Tekkenen's Earth Branch, is working with this bearded guy, as he's referred to. That one. Yeah, that one. I forgot. Well. And, uh, oh my god, what's his name? Chad, the, uh, the leader of the Earth Branch. Yep. Uh... They're doing some sec- some security job for Machinai. Mm-hmm. And there's an attempted murder. And Chad takes the brunt of the explosion. Knocking him hey. into a coma. And basically putting Radik in charge of the Earth branch. He jams communications between Earth and Mars. And basically hands over control of Tekken to that. Gallon guy. Yep. So, yeah, so, uh, Gallon and the guy, the communications guy within Tekadin basically plotted to kill Machinai with the bomb. And I think they were going to frame Tekadin for it, but it didn't work out that way in the end. So, they were going to start this war and draw it out for as long as possible to ruin uh, McGillis's reputation. Yep. Because he was in charge of the opposing force <laughs> of Gallerhorn on, or- on Earth. Yes, that is true. Because McGillis had been uh, rising the ranks of the Seven Stars, the... Yeah, he, he basically wants control of Gallerhorn. He cut out a bit there, buddy. I said he basically wants control of Gallerhorn. The seven star, the seven stars are like the top seven people in Gallerhorn. Yep. They make all the decisions. And he wants to eliminate that system. Rustal I... Elion is the current leader of Gallerhorn. Yep. The commander of the Arianrod fleet. Wait, is he the leader of Gallerhorn? I'm pretty sure. I... Yeah. I know he's the commander of the the Arianrod fleet, but I, I didn't think he became leader of all of Gallahorn until the end of the season. He has the highest position on the the Council of the Seven Stars. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And, yeah. He doesn't fuck around. No. Nope. Oh, I hate him so much. I can't decide whether I hate him or like him. He used some pretty underhanded tactics during this. Well, yes, that is true. He used the Dine Slave, which is supposed to be illegal. Yeah. So. The Dine Slave, it, they were like railguns? Yep. They shot giant metal spikes. Railguns in space. Yep. So they don't slow down. Yep. Due to friction. Oh my They're... god, that's scary. That That is so scary. <laughs> they were a weapon used during the Calamity War against the mobile armors. Uh-huh. And have been outlawed since then. Uh, I did some research into this, and the, the Dine Slave is actually a thing from Norse mythology. Oh, okay. The Dineslave, or Dine's Legacy, was a cursed sword that must kill whenever it's drawn. Oh, okay. And it sure did cause a lot of death in... They put a lot of thought into this series. Yes, they did. Oh. I didn't even... Oh, well, I was going somewhere with that, but I forgot. (laughs) Maybe? So, 
maybe drinking isn't such a good idea. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, but it makes everything more fun. Yeah, yeah it does. So, after the attempt on Machinai's life, um, their uh, plan starts to unravel a bit, and they start um, attacking Tekken units on Earth and Mars, I think. Uh -uh. Or was it just Earth? I think it was just Earth. It was uh, just Earth. Okay. the Mars branch didn't hear anything from right 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 yep yeah they they lost yeah, communication they, with earth so they started heading there they 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 found out when these attacks were already happening yeah yeah okay and it yep. takes 3 weeks to get to earth from mars yep so this battle had been going on for 3 weeks when they got there yep and they f learn of the communication guy's deception, and the Gallon guy starts a fight with some Tekken in mobile suits, and I think Barbatos got involved? Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember who defeated him. Uh, was it Mikazuki, or was it someone else? It was not Mikazuki. Right. That... That victory goes to Akihiro. Oh, right. Yep, okay. Who cut him in half with a pair of giant scissors. Which is the most unique Gundam weapon I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he blew himself up before. Yep. Destroying all evidence of his existence. Yep. So, basically, this communications guy and this mercenary kind of started a domino effect and everything just gets progressively worse from there <laughs> I mean I'm pretty sure it could have been resolved but Orga was in such a rush to give his family a happy life yeah that they ended up all dying yep well if they, if they would have never if it would have ended there, right? If they with, hadn't gone along with McGillis's idea? Yeah. It, it would have been fine. But they went along with McGillis's idea of Orga becoming the king of Mars. And McGillis being, taking over all of Gallarhorn. And They've that was actually... They could chew. Yeah, th that was actually going fine for a while. Until the, uh... Until they find the mobile armor. <laughs> and yeah. that's when everything goes to shit. <laughs> so... Oh, yes. The most unique portraying of mobile armor in Gundam. Yes. A completely automated one. Almost like it's its own... Like it has an artificial intelligence. Yes. Which is, I've never seen that in Gundam before. Absolutely terrifying. Yes. That, it, that is absolutely terrifying, because the main weapon on this thing, oh dear god. It can level a city. It's a laser. And it does level a city. <laughs> <laughs> so. The beam weapon. Basic, so... They find this mobile armor in one of it, one of the mines that they're clearing for metal. Yeah, apparently and... half metal can block the the signals of uh, what are the engine called? The um, uh, Ahab. Yeah, yeah. They can block the Ahab waves of yeah uh, of mobile suits. Yep. So it was just buried by ha buried in a clump of half metal, like three hundred years ago. Yep. Maybe more. We don't know when it was defeated. But the Gillis was going to quietly take care of it, <sighs> and then that dumbass Eok Kujan showed up. Yep. He... Well, actually, actually, oh. it wasn't even his fault. 
No. When you really think about it, it was Tekadens. Oh, why is that? Because McGillis was going to quietly take care of it, and they found one of the um, mobile armor drones, and they turned it back on. Yes. Which turned on the mobile armor. <laughs> no, that that isn't it. I thought it turned on the mobile armor. Nope. The drone itself just went on a little rampage in Tewas's. Oh, right, armory. that's... Right, that, okay, yeah, and then... The mobile armor reacted to the Ahab waves of Kujan's mobile suit. Yeah, and his, his, uh... Didn't he shoot it, too? He shot it later. Oh, okay. He, oh my, I want to strangle him. He he is the most annoying character in the series, I, I gotta admit. He oh. he drives me up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's always talking about honor and respect and how he has to avenge his fallen comrades, and he just... He's the dumbest person in the world. Yeah. I don't understand how he is... I don't understand how he has lived as long as he has. Yeah, I don't understand how he made it all the way to the final episode. I will never get that. That mobile armor should have killed him dead. Didn't make it past the final episode, though. No, he did not. <laughs> Akihiro took care of that. <laughs> <laughs> With the scissors again. <laughs> uh, uh, did the world that... some good, buddy. That that was the most satisfying scene in Gundam history I think I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so... So yeah, he wakes up the mobile armor. And bad things happen. <laughs> See, the, the Gundams were created to fight the mobile armors in the Calamity War. Yep. And, well, I don't know where I was going with that. Well, they were designed to fight the mobile armor, but nobody knew how to fight a mobile armor Yeah. when this thing woke up. So... I, look, I learned something really interesting during my research. What's that? So, of the 72 Gundams created to fight the... the mobile armors? Yes. When Iron Blood Orphans begins, mm -hmm. there are only 26 left. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of them got destroyed then. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's never stated in the anime anywhere. I think it's from the manga. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, by the end of the season, there would only be 23, maybe, left yeah. by my count. Because I don't know if... The, uh, oh, what was it called? The Vidar? Is that what it was called? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that got destroyed or not. No. Vidar was Gylio's. Yeah, Gylio's Gundam. But he he switched it back to what he had in Season 1 and then used it to fight McGillis. I don't know if that mobile suit got destroyed or not. Ah. Uh. Because we see... At the end of the season, we see them put Bile back where it belongs, so that one survived. Yeah. But... Flowers got I, destroyed. Flowers got destroyed. Um, Gushion got destroyed. Barbatos got decapitated. Yeah, Bar Barbatos is pretty much done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. My apologies. No, that's okay. Um, so, they wake up this mobile armor, which just starts causing a hell of a lot of havoc. They don't know how to fight the thing, they don't know what to do. And then, it, it starts to make its way towards... Well, at first it... Oh my god, what was that guy's name again? The annoying dude? Eok. Eok. Yeah, so the mobile armor uses its drones to basically wipe out his whole team. And he retreats. And he retreats. Like a little coward. Well, they told him to. Yeah, I wish he died. Yeah. Would have saved us a lot of trouble. And then 
when the mobile armor and he's injured, he's injured. His mobile suits completely just trashed and the mobile armor needs to refuel. So it decides to move towards the biggest city on Mars. Yeah. And it, it it's sending out its drones to consume fuel and metal to re- refuel itself and to repair itself because it yeah. is, it repairs itself. Yeah. No matter how much damage you do to it, if you don't destroy it, it'll come back stronger. Yep. That's so... God, that's scary. It also has a uh, tail that it uses to knock mobile suits aside, impale them. It's like a giant spike. <laughs> yeah. Sort of thing. Which, after they defeat the mobile armor, Mikazuki makes a part of his Barbados Gundam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, here's my trophy. <laughs> 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 but, so they decide to set up, like, a... An ambush. An ambush to try to lead the mobile armor away from the city. And then... Kujan, and with his trashed mobile suit, fucks all that up. <laughs> decides to try and snipe the mobile armor with a full power blast from his mobile suit at like yeah. a mile away, doing no damage. Yep. So apparently, it does more damage the closer you are. Yeah. Takes and it off course, starts going towards this farmland and kills all the people there. Ujan, I'm going to murder you if you weren't already dead. Uh, and during the, uh, when the mobile armor first woke up, it got into a fight with Barbatos. Barbatos got knocked around, Mikazuki got hurt, but by this point, when they're trying to distract it, Mikazuki is trying to convince Orga to let him go back out into Barbatos. Yeah. And fight this thing. Specifically for the Gundam pilots, uh, when they're near the mobile armor, the Alea Vignana system doesn't work quite right. Yeah. Basically, it turns off all of the limiters to the Alea Vignana system. So basically, the mobile suit gets pissed off. Yeah. The Gundams just, get pissed off. It's just really cool! <laughs> it's, it's like that... It's like the Gundams have some sort of sentience built in. Yes. It's it's very cool and interesting. We and often Orga. see we often see Mikazuki talking to the Barbatos throughout the series. And this yeah. Ah I wonder. You wonder what? Wonder if the Barbatos talks back. Maybe. Only he can hear it. <laughs> yeah. And this is the part where um Mikazuki defies Orga for the first time. Mm. Orga won't let him go back out in Barbatos, and Mikazuki basically says, well, to hell with you, I'm going anyway. So. The mobile armor... They manage to separate it from its drones. Yes, they do. But then it pretty much destroys everyone's mobile suits. Yep. And then it starts heading back towards the city. And then begins my favorite battle of this show. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Before we get to that, Ride, um, the orange-haired kid in um, Shino's old mobile suit. Oh, yeah. Because he gets the, 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 God, I can't pronounce that, that Gundam again. Flowros. Flowros. He gets, he gets that Gundam, so now Which he has a new he... mobile suit. Paints pink and calls the Ryusego. Yep. Of course. I like Flowros. I know, right? And so Ride gets out ahead of the mobile arm and it goes to the exit of this canyon that the mobile armor is in. Yeah. And tries to hold it off. It fires its main... It, it detects the people in the city behind Ride, and it fires its main weapon, which Ride tries to block, and it bounces off of the 
shield of the or the armor of the shield goes around his mobile suit and ends up destroying part of the city anyway. Everyone died. Yep. <laughs> so, and then when the mobile armor is just about to kill Ride, Mikazuki shows up. <laughs> I am really curious as to what the origin of these mobile armors is. Yeah, me too. Because I, I, I'm wondering if they were trying to develop like better military technology, and it became like self-aware. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Or if some other mysterious beings in space programmed them to kill all of humanity, <laughs> aliens again. This isn't double O. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, that's what we'll be doing next. So, stay tuned. <gasps> yes. But, like you said, your favorite battle. Yes. Uh, Mikazuki, Mikazuki just... Mikazuki goes ham on mobile armor. He beats the ever-loving shit out of it. He goes into that, like, berserk mode. The eyes turn the... red and glowing. It basically, he decides to fight this thing without the limiter of the Alea Vinyana system. He fights and... this thing solo! Yep. And takes it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Throwing his weapons at it, they break, he, gra he grabs the other one's big sword. Yep. And just impales it. Before we tell you the outcome of this battle, though, I need to go back a moment, because Shino uh, cuts off the mobile armor from its drones by collapsing part of the canyon right? with guns on the mobile suit that resemble the Dine Slave, which right. at this point are illegal weapons, and they don't know that. Yeah. So, and this leads to a whole bunch of crap later on. <laughs> But anyway, Mikazuki they, wins. Mikazuki wins, destroys the mobile armor, and paralyzes the entire right side of his body. Yeah, well, I can still use his face, but yeah, but, <laughs> his, yeah, but from, his leg is gone. He can't use his arm. He can't use his leg. So basically, for the rest of the season, he has to be carried around by somebody. By, Hush. and that's where Hush comes in, <laughs> and it's super cute. Yes, he went from wanting to compete with Mikazuki to just wanting to be Mikazuki. Yeah, T to being Mikazuki's wheelchair, basically. Yep. With legs. Yep. <laughs> yep. And. Then, after all that happens, Tekken finds out that uh, Tewas is being investigated for the sale of illegal weapons. Yep, because of the Dine Slave they used during the fight with the mobile armor. Yeah, although I, I theorize they're just using that as an excuse, because after everybody saw what Barbatos did to that mobile armor, it terrified people. Yeah. And they didn't think that these mobile suits should be in the hands of anybody. So, so even though Gallerhorn uses them too, fucking hypocrites. <gasps> the, uh, some guy in Tewa's, uh, kind of pissed off with all the attention Tekadin and the turbans are getting. Yep. So he, uh... He, uh, makes a deal with, um, is it Rustle Elyon? Directly? Yeah. yeah. Uh, either Rustle or that fat dude. Yeah. I don't remember. Probably Rustle. Yeah. And they attack the uh, turbans. Pretty sure I'm skipping out on some stuff here, but... Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, didn't... Okay. Uh... Or did that happen? No, that didn't happen. Wait, we're... Yeah, I'm getting way ahead of myself here. I apologize. So... Yeah, they frame Tekadin for selling illegal weapons, yeah. even Jas though Gallahorn Jasley. has them. Yeah. Jasley's the guy in Tewaz. Yeah, he's the guy who made the deal with Rustle to 
Just leave basically to basically frame Tekaden. Then... Because he wants to be the leader of Tayawas. Yeah. And but yeah. but Tekaden is kind of protected right now because of Megillus. Yeah. Um, um Iak Kujan goes after Tekaden because Jasley told him that they were the ones pulling the strings. Yep. And they decide that in order to get to Tekaden, they'll go after the turbans. Oh, I, mm, did they go after the turbans first or Tekaden? No, they went after the turbans first. Okay. No, but, no, I do believe Iak Kujan went after Tekaden first because he was well, the he, first one to use the Dine Slaves. E, yeah. He used them on the turbans. Af after... Hmm. He used them on the turbans after he used them on Tekaden. Because he, he wanted to go after Tekaden, disobeyed Rustle Elion's orders, and used illegal weapons against them. The same ones that they had used on Mars. Yeah, that was against the turbans. <laughs> no. There was a... He he didn't go after Tekadin until after the turban thing. Let's see. I, I, I'm, I'm I'm almost positive that he attacks the turbans first, and that's what pissed off Rustal Elion. Because he used the Dine Slave on the turbans. And Tekadin was trying to get there in time to help them. Hold on. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, see? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> because they figure that without the turbans helping them, that Tekadin is vulnerable. So, so yeah, they're also framing the turbans for the sale of illegal weapons. And uh, so yeah, so a big battle commences between between uh, douchebag McGee and. And the turbans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the turbans, instead of running away, decide to defend themselves. And that's when he decides to use the Dine Slave. Right. And, uh... Both... Um... Oh, my God, I can't remember their names now. What are you trying to think of? The, the two leaders of the turbans. Oh. Uh... Naze? Yeah, Naze, and then there was the female. Remember her name? I, I just remember they called her Madam. Madam. Oh my god, it's like right there. Amida. Yeah. They both die in this battle. That was super sad. Yes. Uh, Takadate intervenes under the guise of doing some practice oh. maneuvers in space. Wait, 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 wait. What up? I think we screwed this up. Did we? I don't think the turbans were attacked by a uh, douchebag McGee. No? They were attacked by uh, uh, that Taywas guy. Didn't they? And he used the Dine Slave? Because they were given to him by Kushan? Mm, no. That. No, no, wait, sorry. No, no, that comes later. Sorry, yeah. never mind. Never mind, I remember now. So, yeah, so they use the Dine Slave to take down the turbans, and this pisses off Rustle, obviously. Yeah. And so the turbans are broken up. Most of their pilots and children and whatever <gasps> are. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Are divided up amongst other factions within Tewas. And oh. And I can't remember her name. But uh Aki Hiro uh starts to develop feelings for Lofter. Lofter. 
um, one of the turban pilots. And she, him. Yep, and she, him. And they go out on one date. <laughs> and uh, Lofter stops inside a store that sells stuffed animals. Finds one that looks like Akihiro. Yep. And, and... that... And then a uh, Tewas hitman shoots her through the glass <laughs> of the store. I lost it. Yeah. I fucking lost it the first time I saw that. I'm cheering up right now, damn it. I really liked Lofter. That was it. Yeah. And then we find out that... Then we find out that it was a... Um, Oh, God, I can't remember his name. I'm not good with names. It was Jastly that was behind it. Jastly, yeah. Jastly ordered the hit. By the way, Jastly is the son of the head of Tewas. Is he? Yes, he is. I'm pretty sure he is. Because he keeps calling him Dad. That's just what they call the leader. Like, Pops. I've never heard anybody else call him that. Or Old Man. Yeah, Old Man, but he calls him Dad. <laughs> I don't think he is. Well, either way. <laughs> he ordered the hit. Tackett and finds out about it, gets pissed off, and decides to go after him. Yep, that's how things went. Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. And he's supposed to receive backup from Yakujan, but... Yes. So all of Tekken goes after this guy, and he's supposed to receive backup, and Kushan decides not to show up. Because, uh, what's his name? The, uh, the leader of Tewaz, uh, McMurdo. Yeah. Cuts a deal with Rostel Elion to, uh, put an end to the, uh, to the drama. And, uh, well, especially, uh... <laughs> oh... I'm losing it. Yeah. But wait, where are we at now? Uh, McMurdo, the leader of Tewaz, cuts a deal with Russell Elion to call off Iyakuja Oh, yes. The... To make sure that he doesn't receive backup because he finds out what he did. Yep. He and... Finds out about the mutiny he was planning. Yep. And... Uh... And... Uh... And... Yeah, Tekken kills him. He's about to lose, and he calls up Tekken. Like, yeah, we can we can solve this with words, right? We can talk this out. And Org is like, <laughs> I only answered your call so I could hear you grovel. I only I only answered your call so I could hear you beg for your life. And I gotta be honest, it's not as entertaining as I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, and the then, fucking power move. And then Barbatos lands right in front of them. Like, right in front of their... What's it called? Uh, the uh, bridge of the ship. Yeah. So they can see Barbatos, like, right out the window, right in front of them. And Mikazuki <laughs> says, what should I do? And Orca says, kill them all. So he does. <laughs> he, he smashes the bridge of the ship with that giant mace thing. And it just... Yeah. That was so cool. Oh, I had to shit uh, my pants if I were him. That was... That was a very cool moment. <laughs> That's terrifying! <laughs> it, it, was, it was even... It was even kind of terrifying while watching it, because you weren't expecting it, and then all of a sudden you just hear a loud bang as Barbatos lands on the ship. It's kind of startling. Woofda. <laughs> 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 so... So all of that takes place, <laughs> and pretty sure they just follow McGillis's plan the rest of the the rest of the show. Yeah, I think I I can't remember if this is the point where McGillis takes over Gallerhorn. Yeah, and starts a revolution and announces it on TV and everything, and. After that, it's basically all of Gallerhorn versus Tekadin and McGillis. McGillis he... goes and 
claims the original Gundam frame. Yes. The, the mile. ASWG01 Gundam Bile. Yeah. But yeah, Bile is the founder of Gallerhorn's mobile suit from 300 years ago. What was his name again? Agnika Kairu. Yep. And it shows a picture of Guy Leo for some reason. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we googled it and it. Yeah. What the hell? So. I'm just going to get this out of the way. Throughout the entire season, Gylio is wearing a mask and calling himself Vidar, but it's it it's obviously Gylio. Like it's not hard to figure that out. He sounds like um he oh uh, yeah his first interaction with with uh, Megillus. It's like I'm the man that you killed. Like oh yeah Ooh. you're uh, yeah it's Gylio. You're Gylio. I, I called it. <laughs> you know, the, the I... first time w w when me and when me and Fat Man were watching this, the first time Vidar shows up and he starts talking, I said, "Oh, hi, Gylio. What's with the mask?" <laughs> <laughs> and here I am, trying to be like, "You're like, it could be, it might not be, it clearly is." <laughs> So, real talk, I watched the second season, I, I didn't watch it back to back with the first one. Right. I watched the second season after it came out and dubbed. Yep. Like, a year after I'd watched the first season. Right. So I forgot about Gileo. Yep. I was watching it, and Vidar showed up, I'm like, oh, I wonder who this guy is. Didn't realize until he took off his mask. <laughs> and that is the only reason why, not because I'm a complete idiot. <laughs> what was Guy Leo's last name? He was a part of the one of the bigger families in yeah. Gallerhorn. Um, Bodwin? Bodwin. That's what it was. Guy Leo Bodwin. Yep. Gillis Farid. Yep. And... Yeah. <laughs> so, Just so obviously him. <laughs> but anyway. So, McGillis takes Bile. He thinks that by piloting the original Gundam... All of Gallerhorn will stand behind him and follow him in, into battle against Rustel Elion. Yeah. But then Gallerhorn's like, "You stole our holy symbol, uh, you traitor! We're gonna kill you!" Yeah. And everyone rallies against him. And there's uh, when McGillis takes Bile, uh, Gylio shows up, and this is where we find out that he is Gylio. <gasps> Because Megilla should have killed him in the first season, but he lived. Yeah. And so, for any of you who've seen our video about season one, the end fight in that one was with a guy named Ein, who basically makes himself a part of a mobile suit. He became a giant Gundam. Yes. Well... The Gundam that Gylio is piloting, the Vidar, um, has the Alea Vignana system from that mobile suit that Ayn was plugged into at the end of Season 1. So, this Gundam is piloted by both uh, Gylio yep. using the and... Alea Vignana system and the mind of Ayn. Yep. Working it was essentially like a... Yeah, who's essentially like an artificial intelligence now. Yeah. And Gylio can now plug into the Alea Vignana system. Using the 100% output of the Alea Vignana system without paralyzing himself like Mikazuki does. Yeah, because it's all going through Ein. Yep. Yeah. So. I thought we would get to see that we unfortunately did not <laughs> no but it can keep up with bile which is impressive yeah so 
Oh, by the way, just I because I, I said that uh, Guy Leo's mobile suit was my favorite last season. No, Bile is. <gasps> yeah. Yes, Bile is my new favorite. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But uh, they take on the Ariane Rod fleet without backup yeah. from Gallerhorn. Yep. They and are... the Alianrod fleet decides to use the Dine Slave. They have a uh they've got a mole in Gylio's army. Yep. That fires a Dine Slave at the Arianrod fleet to justify the use of the weapon on Rustle's side. Yep. That underhanded snake. And that leads to an all-out battle between the the forces loyal to Megillus and Tekadon. Yeah. And they do fine at first, but yeah. then they bring out the Dying Slave, and yeah, things go very poorly after that. And uh, this is the battle where we lose our first Gundam. In a last-ditch effort to kill Rustal Elyon. With they, a dying slave. They send out Shino in Lauros, now dubbed the Ryusego. Yeah, with those illegal weapons that Ryusego 4, is it? Yes, I believe so. And... Really cool tactic where they... They went, they went right at Rustal Elyon. Yeah. Shielded by another ship again. Yeah, who was being piloted by, uh, um, oh my god, I can't remember his name. Eugene? Eugene, again. Yeah. They used the same tactic from season one, the piloting of two ships using the Alea Vignana system. And then the, the, sh the second ship blows up, creating yep. a uh, smoke sheet, a smoke screen. And and Chino deploys and uses the distraction to try and take out Rustal Elyon with the illegal weapons he used against the mobile armor. And he misses. At the last moment, uh, Julieta throws her weapon at him. Yeah. Oh, we should probably talk about her, too. Um, Julieta is working for... I don't know who she's working. I mean, she's clearly working for Rustal Elyon. Yeah, she works directly but, under him. Yeah, but I, I don't know if she... But she's... Throughout the season, she works with um, Kushan, and then she works with Gylio. Yeah. She's yeah. mainly there to keep an eye on Kushan, like a babysitter yeah. or something, because... Keep him from getting killed. Yep. Yeah. So, and then... Shino's Gundam blows up, and Shino dies, and I feel very bad for my favorite character at this point in time. <laughs> poor Yamagi. Well, I guess poor Shino, he died, but still. Yeah. And, uh, so after that, basically the Megillus, Megillus's fleet and Tekadin are very badly decimated, and they all retreat back to Mars. For the final battle. Yep. And, um... And, uh... <sighs> Orga tries to make a deal with Rustal Elyon to say, okay, you take me in, and you leave the rest of Tekken alone. And Rustal Elyon... Do you think Elyon... your life is worth all of your men? With all yeah, of I your don't. sins? I don't think so. So Rustle tells him to go fuck himself. <laughs> Essentially. Doesn't even give him the option to turn themselves in. They just nope. going to massacre He's gonna them kill. to put on a yep. example for the rest of the world. Yep. <laughs> Keep order and balance. Restore the honor of Gellerhorn. Mm-hmm. So they don't know what they're going to do because the Alien the ugh, I keep calling it that the Arianrod fleet surrounds Tekadon on Mars. Yes. 
There's no escape. There's no escape. But they come up with this plan that they can get back to Earth and get help from Mach and I. Get fake identities and whatnot. Yep. So they decide to use a tunnel system that is under their old uh, mining base. Under the old CGS. Yep, base on Mars. That has, uh, that's that been there since the Calamity Wars. Yeah. You thought there was going to be a mobile armor down there. I did. I, I thought there was going to be. I, I, I assumed we would get more than one mobile armor, but I was wrong. I didn't expect the ending we got. No. So... I figured, I, I, I kind of expected it to end like they find another mobile armor, they have to unite to fight this thing, and then they all just get along and forget about everything. It didn't happen that way. If only it were that uh, simple. Yeah. Um, so they they clear it out and they set up the CGS building to explode. They're going to destroy it. And Orga, Ride, and I don't remember who else went with them. Chad? Was it Chad? <clears throat> I think it was Chad. Okay. They go to... Uh, they go into town to get Kudelia. Yeah. And, uh... No, that... uh, Kudelia was with them. They were bringing her back to Admos. Oh, right. Tried to get in contact with, uh... With Earth. Yeah. Yeah. So, they bring her back. And as they're leaving, <laughs> well, the uh, fat guy from season one who's... Noblest. Noblest, yes. Noblest Gordon. He hires a bunch of people to attack them as they're getting into their car. And Ride almost gets caught in the crossfire, but Orga shields him. And Orga takes a whole bunch of machine gun fire to his back. <laughs> and the bastard wa- stands up and walks <laughs> several feet like a fucking JoJo character. Yep. Takes bullets and just walks it off. And he ends up dying. <laughs> Collapses, giving them yep. the final order. Don't yep. stop. Keep going forward. And this leads into the final episode, or as I like to call it, you just pissed off the wrong pilot. Yukazuki! Unleashed. He snapped. With no one giving no one to give him orders anymore. Yep. No one to hold him back goes fucking berserk against Gallerhorn. Yep. And they just start. He just starts wiping out their forces along with Akihiro. They have two mobile suits against an army. Two Gundams, yep. of course, but <laughs> yep, they had already won the battle. Yep. And because of this, Rustal Elion decides to use the Nine Slave once more. Yeah, he, he fires them down from orbit at the surface of Mars where the battle's taking place. Takes out both of Barbatos' arms. Yep. He's just running around on the battlefield with no arms and a tail. Yep, he's using the tail thing from the mobile armor. Yeah. And fighting uh, Julieta. And uh, this is finally, finally, where Kushan gets killed. He gets cut in half those scissors. Yeah, by Akihiro. Crushed to death in a metal coffin. Yep. Oh, Hush also dies during this battle. Oh, I was really hoping he'd live. Yeah. I I knew Mikazuki was going to die, because even if he got back to base and escaped through the tunnel, he couldn't walk. Yep. And Akihiro had already lost... His brother and his girl. Oh. oh, I completely skimmed over something. What's that? <laughs> Yet again. <laughs> I did the same thing in our season one review. Um, so, Atra. I was going to get to that. Oh, okay. It was a uh, subplot in uh, throughout the season. 
Atra and Kudelia are just madly in love with uh, Mikazuki. And Atra has this idea that uh, maybe if we have babies with him, he won't go out and die. And then we... And then Atra actually talks to Mikazuki about this, and Mikazuki approaches it like, well, yeah, sure, why not? I'm not doing anything right now anyway. <laughs> oh my god. So, so awkward. Yeah, and so we forward. So we find out that Atra and Mikazuki are having a kid. Yeah. Which we get to see at the end of the episode. The the kid, not them conceiving it. That'd be freaking weird. <gasps> yeah, go go read some hentai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but not of these fucking preteen no. kids no. <laughs> no that's a bit weird so yeah the Tekken and loses yeah and uh they they most of Tekken, um at least the ones that weren't fighting in mobile suits during this battle make it out and make it back to earth and they're given fake identities, and now they're living in hiding. And uh, Rustle Elyon, this big grand vision that McGillis wanted for Mars and Earth and Gallarhorn actually comes to pass, but it's Rustle Elyon who does it. Yeah. And he becomes the head of Gallarhorn. Like, there's no seven stars anymore. He is the de facto leader. Of course, it's more of a democratic system. Yes, it's more democratic now than ever before. And so basically, one family doesn't have so much power. Yeah. Yeah, and Kudelia actually becomes the... What would she... The Prime Minister of Mars? The President of Mars? I don't know what you would call it. It's one of those... Yeah, one of those two. The, the the head, the leader of Mars. Yeah. Yep. And I'm I'm assuming it's Prime Minister because that's the one they use. That's the term they use throughout the series. But uh, yeah. Oh crap! I almost forgot. <laughs> oh my god. We so, seem to be doing that a lot. Yeah. So, um, during the was it the second to last episode? McGillis dies. Oh, yeah. yeah. He gets killed by Gylio. <laughs> they have a giant fight where Gylio's in his Gundam, McGillis is in his Gundam, and they have a fight, and McGillis is trying to destroy Rustle Elion's ship and kill Rustle Elion, but he ends up dying in the process. <laughs> and. Yeah, I didn't expect Gylio to live, but he lived. <laughs> Escapes bleeding through the corridors of Rustle's ship. Mm -hmm. And just... McGillis catches up with him and shoots him. A lot of... No, he didn't shoot him. He did. He didn't. He did. He no, the reason... Wound. No, he had a thing... He had a piece of metal sticking in his back. He did, but he also got shot. I don't remember him getting shot. And he bled out. Huh, okay. During their conversation. Yep. That's, that helmet actually... Blocked the bullet. Did some good for Gaileo. Yep. And... But yeah. Gaileo lives. Julieta is now working with Gaileo. And... She is. It's it stated that she's poised to become the leader of Gallarhorn after Rustal Elion. Yeah. Or was it the leader uh, of the Arianrod fleet? No, I think it was the leader of Gallarhorn. All right. I think she is already the leader of the Arianrod fleet since mm -hmm. Rustal Elion is now the leader of Gallarhorn. <laughs> oh yeah. But very, very bittersweet ending. Oh, yeah. Very, 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 very. And uh, we see that... And, and they go over some of the characters and what they're doing now. Um, Ride actually kills Nobilis Gordon. On the shitter. Yep. And like a mob-style hit. It was 
Very satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we see some other characters and what they're doing now. And Asha's grown up raising her kid. Yeah, and Cudelia goes out to see them. Eugene and Chad. Eugene is uh working for the Admos company. Yep, working for the Admos company. And uh Yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Everyone's dead. Everyone's all all of the main characters who affect everything die. Yep. And that that actually brings up a point. Um this is one a very few Gundam series where the bad guy doesn't only not die at the end, but wins. Yeah. So. I don't think I've seen that before. I know I haven't. Huh. That's but, the, yeah. That's the story of... Season 2. Yeah. And that, so now we're done with Iron-Blooded Orphans. And the theme they use during the second half of Season 2 is now my favorite. Yes. Fighter yes. By, Fighter. by Kana Boon. Yep. It's a very cool song. Rage of Dust was for the uh, first half. Rage of Dust by Spy Air. Yep. But I, I can't even remember that opening right now. No, neither was just can I. such a hype opening. It was. It really was. Played... Didn't even play the opening cinematic for the final episode. It just played the theme during the fight. Yeah. I love it when they do stuff like that. Oh, uh, I, I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I went in to this with caution. Yeah. Because of... And I, I, I avoided this thing for the past few years because of what I was being told about it. Because the only thing anybody would tell me about Iron Blooded Orphans is that, oh, the pilots fight without their shirts on. And it just sounded really cheesy the way everyone was describing it to me. But oh now that I've God. watched it, it's probably one of the best Gundam series ever made. Yeah. That's my Bar favorite. None. <laughs> yep. My favorite for a reason. So I, I don't, I'm, Double O is very, very good. This is very, very good. And I couldn't tell you which one is better. I think the movie, um, the Double O movie kind of lets Double O down a bit. Yeah. But I'm not comparing the movie to Iron Blood Orphans. I'm just, because they're both, both the series span over two seasons. So that's all I'm comparing. <laughs> With how good Gundam has been recently, I'm really excited to see what they do next. I know, right? Like, I, I feel like, I don't know if Gundam will ever have another Gundam Wing, not, but like, what Gundam Wing did for Gundam, hmm. how it boosted its popularity and made it more mainstream. I don't know if we're ever going to get another series like that, but it's definitely on the right track. Yeah. So... This this series is really damn good. Yep. And yeah, I I have nothing. Got nothing else. I have nothing really negative to say about it. <laughs> no. I um, I really like the kind of mob boss style of this iteration of Gundam. Yeah, it's not military. It's it's almost like the mob versus the cops. Yeah. It's it's kind of cool, yeah. And like when we finished season 1, the one negative the only negative thing I had to say about it was I wish it went into more of the world's backstory, like yeah. explained it more in detail. But now that I've seen season 2, I realize that that probably would have distracted from the story they were trying to tell. Yeah. So I'm kind of glad they didn't do that. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't really have anything 
negative other than Kushan's annoying little shit, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But yeah, this 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 is definitely an emotional roller coaster of a Gundam series, which I am not used to, but I enjoyed every minute of it. Well, thanks so. for joining me for this. Absolutely. It's my job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are always so fun. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I joined the channel. Yeah. We got a lot so. more... Gundam to go through. Oh, yeah. And we got some other projects in the works. I, I, I hope you're all ready to hear my annoying fa my annoying voice for the next uh, few years, because this is going to take a while. <laughs> <laughs> got all of Gundam to get through any spacefaring anime that we care to yep. touch on. Battleship Yamato! Oh, I can't wait. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Space Battleship Yamato. <laughs> but, yes. Or, as the new one's called, Star Blazers. I, I, I guess the, uh, the, the English dub of that was called Star Blazers, but... Oh, okay. Alright. Star Blazers 2199 is the new one. And... Getting back on topic. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and now for another review. Back to back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not tonight. Well. But yeah, I, I can't, again, just in closing, if you haven't seen Iron-Blooded Orphans, go see it. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> no. So. Okay. Well. We've shared our thoughts, but we'd like to hear yours as well, in the comments below and on our Discord. The night parade has now come to an end. Next week, Gundam Double O. Yes! Later. Peace out. <laughs> oh, I forgot to hit record.